So hello everybody. Uh, my name is Roberto and I'm talking about uh, the effects of ionizing radiation on astronauts' health during a typical uh, Mars space mission. Um, I have uh, completed the biology part of this project along with other two team members uh, that are Caitlin and Maria. And uh, we aim to look for the most important sources of ionizing radiation in the outer space that, as you can see from the graph, are mainly the sun and radiation, but also the Van Allen belt and other things that are very dangerous, like, for example, the cosmic uh, rays, but also, for example, some uh, solar um, events that may happen during a space mission. So uh, we managed to understand that ionizing radiation may represent today one of the most important uh, limitations that we have in order to succeed with uh, Mars exploration, but also beyond the Red Planet. Um, my uh, part of the project is mainly um, focused on the intracellular aspects, but I'd like to show these uh, two slides that give a glance of the other parts of the project. As you can see from this slide, uh, there are different aspects of the so-called um, acute um, ionizing radiation syndrome. Um, as you can see, um, according uh, to the um, exposure to the um, ionizing radiation and also the radiation dose, we can have different effects on the human body. Um, when it comes to lower uh, dose radiation, as you can see, we have hematopoietic syndromes that are linked to um, the creation of blood cells, but also lymphocytes. And this is one of the worst aspects because you can have a damage to the bone marrow that can cause so um, a leukopenia, or for example, the loss of lots of erythrocytes. Or on the other hand, we can have some um, types of cancer that can happen and that can cause, for example, clots that are linked to, for example, the infarct uh, infarctation and so on. Um, as you can see in the middle, we have um, the gastrointestinal syndrome that is linked to the uh, gastrointestinal tract and it is usually linked to some inconvenient uh, aspects of human space mission like for example uh, problems with digestion but also here we can have problems like uh, liver cancer or the GI tract cancer so they can be really dangerous because cancer may happen not only when the astronauts come back on the Earth, but it can also happen in the other space, and this could be a really big problem. At the end, uh, we investigated neurovascular diseases that um, are based on some uh, concerns that we have found in uh, different other articles, like, for example, the link between ionizing radiation and uh, you know, um, neurodegenerative um, diseases. As you can see from this slide, um, I'm mostly focused on what happens inside the cell because like my pathology professors like to say, uh, most of pathology starts from the inside of the cell. So starting from there, you can understand what happens to the microscopic. Um, we investigated the ROS production, that is the reactive oxygen species, but also what happens to the DNA damage during these human space missions. And as you can see, reactive oxygen species are just compounds that contain oxygen and they have um, some unpaired electrons in the outer shell and they can combine two different elements in our uh, cell but um, as you can see from this uh, graph uh, it is only something bad negative uh, radical oxygen species can also be uh, indicators for the um, quantity of oxygen that we have inside the cell. But when this uh, production is disregulated, it can cause uh, lots of uh, different uh, diseases, like for example, atherosclerosis, uh, or for example, we can find diabetes and so on. So it could be very dangerous if the regulation is aberrant. Um, next, I um, analyzed what are the implications of ionizing radiation on DNA? As you know, DNA is a double helix that is mainly uh, composed by this backbone that here is represented with this blue filament. And then we have the bases that connect the two filaments. This um, backbone is uh, mainly uh, composed uh, by uh, phosphor uh, groups and also some sugars, in this case, the oxidable bonds. 
And as you can see, the unicin radiation that comes from the other of the cell, uh, at first it causes damages to the membrane. So for example, here we can have apoptosis or necrosis of the cells. And as you can see, ionizing radiation can cause direct um, problems to the DNA, but also indirect problems because ROS are uh, initially created. And then these species can interact with these bases that we can find um, between the two filaments. And so, for example, some important uh, events like replication, duplication, transcription, translation are always disrupted when these events happen. And as you can see, in fact, uh, we have a protein modification that can cause also genomic instability. And genomic instability is just the prelude for the onset of cancer. So uh, we investigated the most important sources of reactive oxygen species in cell, and they are mainly water, molecular oxygen, and mitochondria. Water because it makes up to the 7% of the internal volume of the cell. Molecular oxygen um, is used by cells in order to complete the um, oxidative phosphorylation. And at the end, we have mitochondria, where we find the so-called ATC, that is the electron transfer chain, that completes this process of uh, uh, cellular respiration. And we can find some reactive species that can cause uh, this uh, onset of pathologies. As you can see here, we have many species that are created because of ionizing radiation. And most of them can interact basically with proteins, with lipids, with nucleic acids, so they can cause lots of damages to the cell. For this reason, we investigated something that could be uh, practically introduced in uh, astronauts in order to prevent all these problems. One of the first things that we notice is that glutathione, something that in medical terms is used in order to define the oxidative um, uh, potential of a cell, can be used in order to protect astronauts from the uh, ROS um, production. In fact, glutathione is this uh, two peptide that helps the cell in order to convert uh, hydrogen peroxidase that is very dangerous for the cell in just simple water that is not um, a problem for the cell. And this can be done according, just uh, following these simple rules. For example, uh, people can be active and this is something that astronauts already do with their training before missions, but also eating lots of fruit and vegetables can help people in order to have a protective effects against the onset of um, reactive oxygen species due to the exposure to ionizing radiation. As you can see, um, then we investigated some other aspects. For example, why not implementing more vitamins in a source diet? For example, as you can see from this graph, vitamin C and vitamin E can collaborate in order to convert reactive oxygen species in just uh, structures like, for example, or a carboxylic acid, or for example, an alcohol that are uh, mainly eliminated thanks to the effect of the liver. So the um, the microsomal system that we find in our liver. And vitamin E is usually called the alpha tocopherol. It is something that, for example, is given to um, mothers when they are going to go into labor. It's something that can help the muscle the uterus in order to pull out the, the heavy luggage, so the baby. And also we have uh, vitamin C that is something uh, that is uh, usually found in carrots and also all the orange fruits. So maybe creating concentrates or making, for example, juices that oceans can use during space mission can be fundamental in order to help them uh, to the exposure, to chronic exposure to ionizing radiation. As you can see from this image, I just resumed what happens when um, the reactive oxygen species of ra radiation goes inside the molecule of DNA. As you can see, we can have modification of the basis that is a process called as mutagenesis that can cause uh, some um, exposure to cancer risk. But also this problem that is really dangerous that is DNA breaks. Because as you can see, we have some mechanisms in our cell that usually work in order to repair these systems. As you can see, they are not really efficient. And they usually lead to the onset of other mutations. And mutation causes genomic instability, as we have seen before. And instability causes the onset of cancer, but also aging. And for this reason, mainly on biological basis, we can say that the twins paradox that is really famous in the physics field, maybe it's not true. Maybe on a physics uh, plane, it probably is because it takes into account relativistic 
um, calculation and so on. But from, a, but from a biological point of view, probably a person could stay for a long time in space without aging. And maybe it ages faster than the person that stays on Earth. As you can see, this is the next step that we are going to um, uh, proceed with uh, in our um, research. This is something that I'm working together with the SRAM. We have had this Monte Carlo simulation made with the Gen4 DNA that uh, is a novel software in order to understand the number of DSBs in our DNA. And we are trying to simulate the impact of ionizing radiation on a whole cell in order to compare this data with something already present in literature in order to correlate the number of uh, double strand breaks that we have analyzed before with the onset of cancer risk in order to understand um, how uh, much is possible that an astronaut that stays for a long time or period or time in space uh, can have cancer. So this is something that we are still developing and it could be really interesting because we have found that no one has written about this before. So it could be really a groundbreaking and interesting aspect because it is always combined with something that we have heard before. Like for example, Jessica, we are talking about the implementation of the specific foods or for example, the shielding technology that we heard in the first uh, session. So it's something that really links everything together. At the end, Relating to what I was saying before, I'm only interested in the thyroid because thyroid is uh, particularly sensible to ionizing radiation. Uh, the first studies on thyroid cancer risk have happened after a Hiroshima bombing because uh, from a gel bone that has been found on the site, it may be there were 10 rays of radiation around the site of the explosion, but uh, we have calculated that during the mission there will be about one, two rays. Uh, but uh, that um, radiation dose, it has been demonstrated that in the thyroid, there is the onset of reactive oxygen species that can cause the onset of macronuclei. And as you can see from this graph, the uh, creation of the macronuclei is bound to cause a thyroid cancer. And you know that thyroid is an organ that is linked to many uh, parameters in our body, for example, um, the um, thermoregulation, for example, that is something that regulates uh, our temperature and may collide, for example, with the um, system in the astronaut suits in order to create uh, cooler or um, heating um, atmospheres during, for example, mass emission outside uh, the space um, shuttle. And uh, just at the end, in order to conclude, I would like to resume with this take home message that um, on the base of what we have uh, understood during these um, projects, summer project, ionizing radiation are really dangerous for our human body. And they can cause um, um, a limitation for human space exploration. Um, thanks to the recent advancements, especially in the space suits and everything linked to technology, we're able to mitigate these problems. But these problems linked to ionizing radiation can also be avoided in order to, um, to thanks to the implementation of the specific foods. So modifying the astronauts' diets and um, also thanks to shielding strategies that have been discussed uh, before. So that's it. Thanks. Thank you very much, Roberto. Very, very interesting presentation. It's, it's amazing that we are what we eat, right? <laughs> and I'm not eating potatoes. I don't. <laughs> um, anybody has any questions for uh, Roberto? So I have one, uh, Roberto, in your presentation, you, you mentioned a bunch of different examples of foods that could help with diets. I also read a study, I think it's a year ago, that showed that prunes were uh, very helpful and they were feeding mice these prunes. And I think Meg can correct me if I'm saying anything stupid. And then they sent these mice to the space station and they saw, I wanted to compare that the, the mice who ate prunes versus the ones who didn't. The ones who did eat prunes had a better adaptation to the radiation. So I just find it fa fantastic that the diet is such a crucial part of, of something that's, you know, you would think of shielding, you would think of all these things to protect yourself from radiation, all these things on the outside, but actually it's what you need on the inside that also helps you. Yes, it's also because I think that 
It is also the proof that, for example, in this particular field of study, um, in aerospace engineering and astrobiology has to work in parallel because we can create the best uh, spaceship ever, but if we don't have protection for the astronauts, once he steps out of the uh, space shuttle, he is uh, practically a burnt marshmallow. <laughs> so <laughs> we have to take care of some of the astronaut health is something really important. And great point. concerning the, the prunes, I think that the, um, they could function also on humans because they are a food that um, is well known for the antioxidants inside. And so maybe they can contrast the onset of the um, uh, reactive oxygen species production. So maybe it's the uh, explanation behind the results on the mice. And Meg, just put the link of the paper in, oh. in the chat, which is cool. Thanks. Yeah, if, if, if we take anything out of this, uh, out of this blue icon today is that space exploration is hard and it has to be interdisciplinary in order to solve long-term human space flight. Right? We have the biologists, I need to talk to the engineers, I need to talk to the physicists, I need to talk to the nutritionists. I think it's, it's clear from what I've been learning today. Um, great. Uh, thank you very much, Roberto.